great sort of a sort of a drill. Just flicking it out. One, two, one. What sort of basic things can we learn with the nunchaku? Okay, controversial sort of subject. The old nunchaku. Whether you're a, an old school Ninja Turtles fan, you're an older school Ninja fan, a uh, Bruce Lee fan. Wherever you saw nunchaku for the first time, you probably saw them and thought, wow, that's pretty cool. I'd probably plaster myself with them, but they look cool. Technically, anything that is connected by a string or a chain can be considered nunchaku. So they're very wishy-washy, you do need a license, as silly as it sounds. Uh, those of you who do have access to something that is similar to this, or do train with nunchaku, that's great. Okay, so, what can we learn here that isn't a million movements and you have to have learnt it for uh, the last 20 years? Okay, we'll do some simple motions here. These are actually from Taiwan. Really, really nice looking unit here. The late brother-in-law had uh, discovered these for me. And of all places, a candy store. Now, obviously, the attitudes towards Nanshiku in Asia are a lot different than they are elsewhere. You could, you could buy some freaky sort of candy and pair of at the same time. Quite an interesting story behind these. But uh, we'll leave that for another day. Another day when we're having a few drinks. I don't really drink all that much anymore, but... Yep. Okay, so, first up, we want to chamber the Nochaku underneath here. And all we're going to do here is a simple, simple sort of a blow. Keep in mind that a lot of Nochaku, especially if you train with different types, have a different length chain. You might be used to a certain length and then when you move to another piece you're going to find it hard to change it without losing it. I think I'm doing alright. I think I'm doing alright so far. I haven't played with these babies in a while. Just listen to that noise. That's magic. Alright, we're chambered. We're chambered underneath. Bang, bang, bang. So what am I doing here? Keeping an arm up, that's what we want with everything that we do. You know, does it look here hit me? I'm swinging downwards. Now, by swinging downwards, causing force to go downwards. Now, there have been scientific sort of tests about how hard the blows are when they hit. If all the force is going downwards, then we're not, we're not causing as much force as we could by going forward with, say, a punch or, or something like that. But it's still going to cause an impact. We're just flicking it out. Now this sort of motion can be used with anything. It doesn't have to be nunchaku. If you're a smart person, you can work it out. Now, where do we go from there? What about this arm? Let me do some shit. What we want to do is we want to swing this around. We catch it, catch it with this one, with this arm. Swap. Now just play with this as well. This is a great sort of a sort of a drill. One, two, one, two, one, two. You can do all sorts of fun. some fun with it. Now, where could we move from here? We need some forward momentum, some forward motion. Now, without smashing up the, uh, the cameras here, or anybody standing around me, yeah, do the drill, get from one end of the room, work your way down to the other side of the room, swap, now just play with this as well. One thing to keep in mind is the pitfalls with training with nunchaku. I have had a few mishaps in the past, one of which I hit myself in the eye quite hard. Now, I was lucky not to detach my retina. All I saw was black, a lightning bolt. It was not a pleasant experience. 
From there on, whenever I was practicing with nunchaku and in a full on sort of way, I tended to put some kind of protective instrument over my eyes. I believe Bruce Lee said that in terms of using them in a reality based situation, they were better looking on film and they were being used in a plausible sort of reality sort of a situation. But we have got more controversy that comes along with the nunchaku here. I believe it was during the 80s in Europe, apparently with a lot of the gang related violence, people had seen these started carrying them around, at which point people thought, oh my god, these are, these, these are a dangerous weapon, which they are, but as the man always does, let's ban everything related to these. This the last time you saw some f***ing moron out there with the nunchaku. Never. They're just going to use a baseball bat, they're going to use, they're going to use bladed weapons, nobody's going to use two pieces of wood or plastic connected with a string or a chain, but politics. So you'll notice that in a lot of martial arts films, or any films that featured nunchaku from the 80s up until the early DVD days, which were late 90s, early 2000s, most movies and photo plays that had nunchaku in them cut these scenes out. Can you imagine watching End of the Dragon with the nunchaku scenes cut out? I remember seeing the, uh, the short Johnny Cage scene in Mortal Kombat in the beginning where he's got a bunch of bad guys facing off against him, he takes out a taser, a taser, takes out spiked weapons, all sorts of, and then the one guy that takes out nunchaku, he's been cut out because of the controversy behind nunchaku being a dangerous weapon. Now last I remember, all these other weapons were just as bad. Thankfully that sort of rule has gone away when it comes to movies, and we get to see our nunchakus on screen again, yay! So, we're moving forward. Boom. Boom. Oh, have fun.